Hey everybody, it is Val. This is What to See with Val, and this is one of my favorite time of years. If you've been paying attention over the last couple of weeks, I have been talking to independent filmmakers, and I love it. We just finished Sundance. I'm also jumping into Zion Film Festival as well, so kind of stay tuned for that. But today I have two people that have already been on the show, and these filmmakers are local to Utah. They have a lot coming up. So I want to jump in. Hi guys. How you doing? What's up? What's going on? Doing good. How you doing? I am doing well. This is kind of the independent film time of year, you know, from September to December, we've got all of the movies that want to be, you know, accepted for the award season. But when we hit January through, I don't know, May, that's when we get independent filmmakers, film festivals. It kind of cut, starts off the festival time of the year. So I'm so happy to talk to you guys because you have a lot of things going on. You've been on the show before with like seven other people. <laughs> we had a little bit of a busier show last time. But let's jump in. Musa, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Musa Aiden. Um, I am from East Africa, Somalia, and um, grew up in Utah. My family lives in San Diego. So my acting career actually started when I met uh, Inglewood Films. Um, first I met this guy named Tua, then I met JD. So my acting started from like getting to know behind the camera, in front of the camera. Um, I remember JD was like, hey, can you just hold that boom? And uh, I th actually, that was the best thing ever that happened to me, honestly. Um, it's, I got to learn how to do the sound. And uh, from there, uh, uh, we did Simone Gold, Dear Lord, Saya. We did, uh, uh, again, Simone Gold, like we had multiple uh, <clears throat> episodes that we did. Then, then we have to uh, challenge ourselves and did short SAG film. As you know, Utah, not a lot of people tell you how to do it and stuff that you need to do. So, but having this guy backing me up, um, we had to do our own. Um, I have to figure it out that uh, what to do, paperwork and all that stuff. So the shoebox was our first SAG short film that we did. It was, the, and we shot in the crazy time, COVID. So every day we have the Ingo van, van picking up people, drug test, I mean, uh, COVID test, COVID test. <laughs> so we had to do our own and uh, it was it was challenging, but also it was the best experience I ever had. Um, from there, then we shot uh, a year, a biggest feature film. Um, and we did a, a private screening at the Megaplex Theater, sold out 300 people. Um, that's and also now what we're doing right now actually that one is on international uh promotion right now uh we have uh black Mandela, the who actually uh our uh distributor international is doing really well they they actually really great people while we wait for that one we actually working on right now american dream a short film and we're going to talk about american dream in a little bit you're going like all the way through the timeline you're that, excited so yeah. I'm an actor, producer, director, um, director, first time directing, uh, which is, we're gonna get back to that, that, that film, but I'm a producer. I have produced a lot of films uh, under Inglewood Films. I am international actor. I did acting in um, Malaysia, Turkey, and also, um, yeah, that's just me. I'm just, uh, most likely I'm an actor, but also a filmmaker. Filmmaker all the way. And I am a big component of not using the word just because you, you are a filmmaker, you're an actor, you are a producer, you're a writer, uh, and I love it. And uh, I've just been watching your career and, you know, you've just been booking, booking, booking. And I love the story um, of of the Inglewood uh, family. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Um, but next, I kind of want to jump into... JD, JD and I 
have kind of known each other a little bit, but not really. <laughs> like, I feel like JD and Musa, like we know each other from social media, We've met a couple of times, we've been on here, uh, but I don't really, really know you guys. So JD, let's jump into, uh, you know, your background. Who are you? How did you get into film? What are you doing? Well, as you see, I'm a father, husband, brother. Oh, man. So I'm from J.D. Allen. I'm from Inglewood, California. I'm trying to team a two-year-old right now. It's her nap. But she don't want to go to sleep. Um, um, so I started off with, um, hold on, let me put on some. I started off with drawing, actually. Um, I used to love telling stories, you know, with my drawings back there. Here. Here. I used to love telling stories with uh, my drawings. And from that, um, I, I, you know, football was my first love. Stop. Football was my first love. And then um, from that, I, I got a scholarship to 10 BYU. That's what brought me to Utah. Oh, wow. Yep. That's what brought me to Utah and um, ended up signing a, a, a deal with um, Cincinnati Bengals. So I went to Cincinnati in 2004, um, got cut. And from there, uh, after the football career, did arena football. After the football career, I was trying to figure out, dang, what am I supposed to be doing? And I seen um, someone, I seen a production company shoot a music video. And I'm like, oh, man, I think I could do, you know, do something like this. And that's how I slowly got into film with music first and then just started creating, you know, little short films with my sons. And now I love telling stories. I, I know exactly, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing and it's telling stories. I I love that. And Musa, I love how you said you were, you started holding, you know, a boom on set. And I think it's so important because JD, then you said you just started making it and you know, I went to film school, but I think the best part of learning how to be a well-rounded filmmaker is starting from the ground up, just being on set, no matter what you can do, holding a boom mic, running to get coffee, you know, as long as you are on set and you are seeing how it works and you're getting into that rhythm, uh, that's how you learn. And it's all about meeting people, being on set, being a sponge. And then deciding from there what you want to do, because a lot of people that I went to film school with, of course, everybody wants to be a director, right? That's, you know, almost everybody in my class, like, I want to be a director. I wanted to be an editor. That's why I went, right? Uh, I loved editing. But once you get on set, once you start making films, you might go off into a different direction and say, this is what I want to do. So when you started getting on sets and actually working in film, in production, did anything change for either of you uh, in, in the direction you thought you wanted to go or how many other things you thought you wanted to try? Or maybe did it pinpoint you in a direction that you wanted to focus on? Musa, let's go with you first. That's actually a great question. Um, <clears throat> even though I started as audio guy, because I fall in love with audio because I, I want to make sure because um, as you know when it comes to film this without audio without a lighting the film is nothing right so I'm glad that I started with that a lot of people start with I want to be a producer but they don't know what comes under, under that but I started with audio but I never thought I was going to be a producer I never thought I was going to be a production manager right so the way what I have learned uh, throughout was that it depends on the project that we're doing. So if we're doing a feature film or a short film, it depends on how many crew that you have. And that's where you jump in. Like, you know, OK, I, I want to focus on this. But until this date, though, one thing that highlight for me a lot was the audio. I'm, until this date, I do a lot, nothing but audio, all our films, our gear and everything else. Um, but now that I, the experience that I have, is why I want to be a director because of um, I feel like I'm capable. I know that I'm capable because of working with this man next, you know, next to him and being a assistant director and all that stuff. I see the responsibility that comes behind it, which is not which is not easy. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, you gotta have to have a patient, and that's why I'm working on right now. <laughs> that's why I'm working on right now. I call this guy every time. Why are you sugarcoat him? why that but now i, I get it why <laughs> I, I get it why he's also calm and not jumping and not getting mad and 
there's a lot of responsibility, but the one thing that I'm still uh, hold on to as a baby is the sound because I, I really take my job seriously because at the end of the day, it comes down to like who was the guy who did the sound, right? So I'm a type of person like that because I want to hold as much in a, a accountability for myself to make sure that I did great, right? Um, I have right to call like, hey, let's do it again. Like, can we do it one more time, right? If you don't do that way, then at the end of the day, then you're not taking your job serious. So director will be long run for now, on, but uh, for now, still sound. I think I'm still holding on to a sound. Nice. How about you, JD? Well, Val, how you said, um, you know, you went to film school and stuff. I, I never had that opportunity. Like, um, I didn't, need, I had no idea I was supposed to be making films. But now, you know, when I was at BYU, it's like, man, I wish I would have, you know, went to that film program there because I heard it was one of the best. But you know, I never, you know. But um, yeah, just learning and um, actually doing stuff and making mistakes and failing. You know what I mean? You have to have years of failing to to even grow. And um, I I told Musa, yeah, I told Musa, I was like, hey hold the boom, like, um, learn the audio, learn this first, you know, um, because that's how you have to learn everything, learn everything you need to learn to make a film, you know, as a filmmaker. And then, you know what I'm saying? Then you could direct. Um, so I try to, you know, show him like, it, it's about being a leader, um, you know, playing football and being on a team. That's what filmmaking is. You got to be on a team. And that's what I love about filmmaking. Just the whole, camaraderie and teamwork and you know 20 different people you know coming together for one project and one vision and one idea is it's amazing to me and I, I i i absolutely love it like i love bringing people from different religions backgrounds um you know what i'm saying just just i i, I love it like I, I love the whole process of, of filmmaking honestly um yeah, but I, I do it all. Like, I, I do it all. But, I, you know, I, I just love the whole process of being around different people, honestly. Was uh, filmmake, like films and movies, a big part of your lives growing up? Were you lot watching a lot of movies? Or was it something that came later in life that you got interested? I know for me, you know, I can remember sitting with my grandpa on his Raiders chair <laughs> in Denver. <laughs> I just remember that he had a Raiders recliner and we're in Denver because that's he had to be like, this is my team. And we would just sit there on that recliner and watch, um, you know, World War Two movies. And that's what kind of sparked it with me. I was like four years old and I never got um, like my parents never told me not to watch a certain kind of film or not to listen to a certain kind of music. They just let me, you know, kind of discover it. and. So I just loved the storytelling aspect of movies and teaching and learning through movies. So that's kind of my my story. Documentaries are, you know, my favorite style, although I love when you get a movie that sparks someone to when they're done watching the movie to go learn more about that topic. To me, that's like a successful film. Not saying I don't love action movies. That's also one of my biggest things where you're probably not going to learn anything. But my favorite is that one that sparks you. So did you grow up watching movies and being interested in storytelling that way? And do you, do you remember like a movie or a music video that kind of was like, this is, this is what I think I want to do? Oh, yeah, I, I grew up on movies as a kid. Um, I didn't realize how big I was into movies until I'm older and I'm thinking about it like, wow, because I remember being like five or maybe five or six years old and watching the first Ninja Turtles and um, Michael Jai White. He was one of the um, he was just a background guy, like right in the beginning. He was young. And then I remember seeing Mike Tyson, the movie Mike Tyson that he first played. And I was like. As a kid, I remember saying, that's the guy from Ninja Turtles. I remember him. And, you know, that's now that I think of, think back, like, that's kind of weird because, you know, I was really paying attention like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's one of my, like, favorite actors right now because he does all this stuff independently. But just, you know, just seeing where he came from and, and me realizing that, you know, being so young, it's like, man, I was, like, really paying attention to movies and I had no idea. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I love movies. I just never, you know, by watching movies, I just never knew, you know, someone like me could be making them myself. I thought, you know, and, um, and then I, you know, just got the courage to, to try to make one. Yeah, love it. How about you, Musa? Mine is different. Um, <clears throat> you know, as as a, as a refugee person, when you're coming down to this country, you never, like for me as Somalian, I never thought I would have a chance to be an actor. This is like any refugee Somali actor can, uh, Somali person can tell you that. Uh, back then, I never thought we had a chance, even a shot to like, you know, uh, to be an actor or anything. So what I used to do is I used to do Somali music, hip hop. I was good at in front of the camera. And uh, by doing that, and I love watching movies, actually, every single movie. When I'm in, watching a movie, I'm in my zone. But never thought that was going to be one of the actor or have a chance or anything. So one day, I got a, it's like a, get a shot for, to be a background, future background um, in Park City here. I believe it's 2000, 2008. Yeah, yeah, 2008. One of the uh, Somali artists was doing a short film, and they were like, they were asking the community, "Oh, who can act?" And they knew that I was doing a music video, and they're like, "You want to be an actor?" Like, I didn't even hesitate. I just went there, and I met Robert Redford, and uh, he was like, "Can you memorize a script?" I didn't even know what that means. I didn't even know what the script means. I didn't know anything. So, I'm a type of person I would never tell you I don't know. I have to figure it out, right? It's like, yeah, I can do it. I just grabbed it and went and asked someone else and memorized it, went back and killed it. And from there, I just, that's how I knew that I, you know I mean? I have a shot, but then I got lost because that was only one moment that I saw them. After that project is done, what's next? Nobody tells you, oh, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, all that stuff. Then that's what I met. Um, Tua then end up meeting Inglewood and then that's when I figured out that I have a shot and now I can, you know, chase my dream. Honestly, being a refugee is really hard for other opportunities because one, you don't get the resource Two, you feel like you don't even have a shot until you try. So those were my struggle, but I always wanted to be uh, active, but never thought I had a chance. So that's why every time I talk to my communities, I said, don't ever say never. Like, you never know. You're going to have to try it. So that was how I get into it. Let's talk about uh, diversity really quick because, uh, you know, I'm up at Sundance and most of the films that I try and focus on are minority films, whether it's w women filmmakers, um, minorities, LGBTQ+. Um, and when I started going up to Sundance, it was really easy for me to cover that because it's like four movies, right? <laughs> it, you know, 10 years ago, it's like four movies. And this year, I just didn't have time to see all of them, um, which is so great uh, because things have changed so much. When I uh, graduated high school, um, you know, I went to USC for a summer program at 17 braces you know white girl from utah <laughs> like um just headed out there and my parents you know we didn't have a lot of money they they scraped they're like if this is what you want to do you know we'll we'll figure it out we'll figure it out so i went out there and i learned a lot of things met people from all over the world and then uh came back to try and work out here and it was really hard to get in as a young female. Um, and I mean, I, at the time, pretty cute. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of put, got put in this category. Well, you need to be on screen. You need to be on screen. And in high school, I started our television um, division at my high school. And I was on screen, but I was also editing off screen and producing off screen because that's what I want. I wanted to be behind the camera right? But they kept on pushing me in front of the camera. And I can't tell you like how many signatures in my yearbooks were like teachers, like, I can't wait to see you like on TV. It wasn't, you know, just kind of being put in this box. And, you know, it was very hard for me to get. And I finally found one guy that was like, do you want to come 
help us build sets. Like, do you know how to do that? And Musa was like, sure. I know how to, I know how to use the hammer. Like I know how to use all that. I had never done it before, but you get on set. And if you learn and you listen and you're not afraid to like jump in and do it. So now I'm working on set with all these burly guys, you know, and that's how I got in. But like, I was also still pushed to be extra and feature, feature extra and all of that. And I'm, I'm happy for the opportunities, but I'm sure you both know a little bit about being put in a box when you first jumped into it. Nobody took me seriously. I actually started making music videos. So we all have that in common. So here in Utah, I found some musicians that actually trusted me because I'm good with music. I can't make music, but I can choreograph to music. You know, I can direct to music. Um, I just, music has always been probably bigger than film for me. Um, but I really had to push to break those barriers that now seem to be moving a little bit. You know, it's not all the way where we need it to be, but moving in the right direction. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, kind of breaking out of that box? Musa, I want to start with you. <clears throat> it all actually, my, my situation where I see my other friends going through right now, mine was different because, yes, I was, uh, you know, yes, I was good at, music and i knew that I, I i'll do great but joining to a class and all that stuff where i don't know nobody and i don't know where to start with it was my biggest struggle so it wasn't a way for me to learn either way because i was in a class where they didn't even like there's no startup right so utah i'm not putting utah down a lot of great classes but there's no startup they, they, they're not going to tell you okay you are a beginner i remember signing up a class and I was throwing in my first audition without even knowing how to do audition, without even knowing what to do, right? Um, that was when, that was, I was about to quit that time because I felt embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't know how to remember, uh, memorize and everything. But also um, being a beginner, sometimes you have to accept that there's a roles that you're not comfortable. You're gonna be playing in the background. You're not be comfortable. You know, you're gonna be extra where you have to sit all the close like there, like, maybe outside sitting there or maybe just a little bit there where other people have their own trailer and everything. You, you're going to have to accept it because you're starting up, right? So being being a newer, I had to go through that, you know, being an extra, being a future background. But how can you scale is how you need to train yourself. Like, yes, you have a future background, but how much are you wanting to be an actor, right? If you are that person want to be that great actor, you can break that barrier. Like you can actually kill it, that role. And you never know, you will get a script right away. And that's what I did. So Happy Worker, uh, first feature film that I was part of, and I become SAG for that film. I was a feature background. I didn't have no line, no even one line. Uh, just because of they wanted to have a, a person with color, you know, uh, diversity to be part of the film. And I was that person. Um, they, they recruited me. They're like, boom, we got you. And that's how I get the job. But that didn't bother me at that moment because I saw an opportunity. It was a future film from LA. Um, but in order for me to kill it and get that, so I did my thing and the director loved me and he called me and said, you know what, I wanna upgrade you. I want you here for two weeks. I got my own trailer, I got my own thing, right? I did that. But it's uh, it's really not easy when you only get cast because of your, you know, because of the diversity they needed. Uh, it's, you know, telling the story should be like, hey, for open for everybody. You know what I mean? So, uh, Musa, I have a question. So does that happen a lot in Utah where you're only get casted because they need diversity? Uh, okay. All right. Um, you know what? You're right. Yes. Um, Let's be real. We're not we're not putting it down. We're just being real. <laughs> be, uh, if, if you want to be real, yeah. Yes. Utah, they should do better. Uh, they need to do better because what they do is that most of the additions that I see on my emails, um, they all, they need a diversity. It's not like because of the story, they have to cover their butt and make sure, hey, look at me, I'm not racist. I have diversity in my film. I'm doing it. You know, I'm not breaking the rule, right? 
Um, I see that a lot. I'm not naming nobody, but I, I want you to, to do better, um, to give everybody equal, you know, I mean, opportunities. Um, so that way everybody can fight for a role. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't have to be black and white. It should be open for everybody. So I can fight for, I don't care the role, the way you wrote that you could be like a, a person from UK or white person or Indian or whatever it is. Let's all of us have the chance to audition and give, you know, because you wrote the story, you want somebody to tell that story. So it doesn't have to be black and white. Give the person that can bring that, you know, your vision up there. You know, that's what Utah needs to do. And I don't think Utah is doing a great job for that. And I hope one day they do it. And that's why I only stick with uh, my brothers and we create our own film. You know, I follow like what Vin Diesel, what he did. When he couldn't get a better role and he keep getting a bad character and everything, what he did, he created his own opportunity. And I'm a same with person. Sylvester Stallone, man. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why we created our own. Because if you can't put me in uh, your film in a better role, I'm going to create that role for me. You know what I mean? I'm going to create it and do it. And that's what Utah is pushing to everybody. But I hope one day they do great. But uh, since since JD called me out, yes, Utah need to do better. Yeah, stop sugar. Right? And they're not the only ones. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's slow moving. You know, when I moved here when I was in first grade and things have changed you know a lot both but yeah it's little steps and i do think that what you guys are doing um with inglewood is making a big difference uh here in utah jd you know quickly tell us a little bit about you know your your story and kind of breaking those barriers oh man like that's what we that's what i take pride in um diversity um even with algia at first the whole concept Honestly, I wanted like um, mostly women like um, like behind the camera and, you know, like working on set with us. Like that was the whole plan. Even when I, you know, started doing pre-production for Algea God of Fame, like I, I wanted like a, a, a lot of women like on set and behind the camera and, you know, calling the shots like, you know, that that was the whole game plan. So like diversity is everything. Inclusion is everything like um, like it makes a big difference, you know, when. When I'm a kid and I see, you know, someone that looks like me behind the camera or, you know, in front of the camera, like it makes a big difference. Um, but not just like Musa said, not just black and white, because, of course, you know, some films like, of course, you know, it got to be like all all white people, you know, for this certain setting, you know. But when it's like that all the time, when you only get called, hey, we need a black person or a Hispanic person or a Polynesian person. So with Inglewood Films, I take pride in having everybody everybody from all over the, you know what i'm saying so i take pride in that and i do want to say something because you know you use the word inclusion and um recently when i was up at a diversity panel at a uh, sundance um giancarlo um esposito i don't know if you guys know who he is uh i love him as an actor but he said something um that really hit uh, the audience pretty hard. And he said, you know, uh, diversity and inclusion, inclusion specifically, shouldn't even be a, a word that we use, right? Um, you know, we should, we should just stop using in, uh, you know, inclusion, because uh, everybody should just have, like you said, Musa, a seat at the table, an opportunity um, to show up and to try and work the job. And uh, he also said something about fear and being on set. Uh, and, and I think we're all a little fearful about jumping in and thinking, well, what if we fail? Uh, and I say run towards failure, man, right? <laughs> uh, run for it. But um, he also said, we've been talking a little bit about teamwork. And I want to say something about this. And then we're going to jump into the films you guys are working on that are coming up. Uh, is that every single one of those filmmakers on that diversity panel uh, said that they wouldn't have what they have if it wasn't for their team. Uh, and Giancarlo specifically said that until recently, like the past 10 years, he always thought that if he had control of the entire situation, that it would go better. So he'd be on set and he'd be like, this is my way. I want it to go this way. Uh, kind of micromanaging the set um and it you know he just realized later on in his career that his way may not be the
the best way, right? So keeping that open and the fact that you guys work with this big team with Inglewood, I've really seen, like, I haven't been on set with you guys, but I've chatted with you. Um, JD, you uh, had, uh, I think, the courage to invite me to come to a private yep. screening. Right. Um, and you, and you, and you asked me like, what's your opinion? And I, and I get asked that a lot by local filmmakers to watch their movies. And I'm like, well, you know, do you want the truth or do you want like the, the little notes about, well, I thought it was good, you know, whatever, but like having that courage to say my team is how we make this movie. And then, having that courage to have feedback without that fear uh, is really something that just kind of impressed me about you. I thought I was showing up to like a big group of people, you know, and I'm like, oh, it's me. <laughs> so, you know, that was really cool. Um, and the film was already all the way made. Uh, so to, to take that feedback when your production is pretty much done, what was your thought on wanting to do that, to get feedback from people at that stage oh man i'm not scared of nothing like um, <laughs> so some artists you know you can't you could tell an artist you know like oh man i don't know about this and they get butt hurt and you know they you know it is devastating for them but me like oh okay all right i'm i learn like um my our first feature film like i was learning like i didn't know like i said i didn't have film school right so how do you learn by doing it oh like, even people in film school man that yeah, does not yeah, make you know how to make a yeah. good movie <laughs> yep, you gotta, you gotta learn you gotta do stuff you gotta get it done so me like i you're you're a professional so i know if you tell me i wanted you to tell me the truth like i tell moose all the time like man like um don't get butt hurt like is okay we're human we're supposed to be emotional and stuff but like when it comes to like your art like learn like don't just get butt hurt and oh man this this ah uh. no nah, like i was i wanted to hear everything that you told me like i, I took it in like oh, okay that's i'm glad you said that because i did think about certain a lot of things that you said of course you know but you know we had an eighty thousand dollar budget that's like what you know you can't make a real feature i mean I mean, I, I you can, can I, and you but, did. You made a real feature film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, like, you know, the, to do what we did with, you know, you know what we had and how we did it. Like, like I, I'm taking it all in. Like, okay, because I know yeah. eventually, like I, I know what we're worth. I know what I'm worth. So I know the money is going to come in, and you know we're able to do a two hundred thousand dollar, or three hundred, or four hundred, or five hundred thousand dollar film eventually. And then I, I, I could, you know put that into that you know what i'm saying but yeah i i love i love all feedback um I, I hate when you know i just get positive feedback like i i hate i'm like ah uh, you know so <laughs> val she was straight up val you were straight up you were like oh well what about this one you know and then of course you know the the postpartum of course like i knew like it's supposed to like get to you and you're supposed to feel a certain way um because yeah. all our films have a message no matter if it's action um, like Saya, that's about like that that movie. It, it has a message. I don't know if people get it, but the message is you know finding yourself, and it's about um, you know trafficking. It's about sex trafficking, and you know like finding who you are and who you want to be. That's what Saya is, but it's a sci-fi action movie. But so every film we do, that we do, it has a message behind it. The shoebox. It's about PTSD. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to feel something. You know what I'm saying? So when you felt, I think the postpartum story got you a lot. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I want to have certain conversations. Yeah. That's what filmmaking yeah. is to me, at least. That's what it is to me. I'm just I'm just a guy, you know, that just loves <laughs> film. So not, so, just, you know, not just, not yeah. just <laughs> some people get it, some people won't, and it's cool. Like I don't I don't really Yeah. Well, and that's what I, I try and tell people when you get into art, um, you know, whether it's a painting, whether it's music, whether it's a film is that it's subjective. And that's why we have so many different types of filmmakers. I'm a critic, right? I am a filmmaker. I haven't made a film in a long time, but right now I'm focusing on, uh, you know, being a film critic. And what that does for me is it allows me to talk to people about how they feel about a film. And then when I get the opportunity to talk to independent filmmakers and say, this is my this is how I felt about it. This is my opinion about it. You just like any other learning, you take what you need from it. Right. 
Um, but just because one person doesn't like your film does not mean that it's not a good film, right? That's just, that's just the thing. Take what you need from that feedback. And like you said, don't get butt hurt. There's so many people that I've talked to about their film. And that's what I ask them. Like, do you want like the truth or do you want just like some notes? Do you just want me to be like, truth. yeah, I can give it a grade <laughs> for you if you want, but do you want to really know, um, what I think and being able to take that in, I mean, that's hard for anybody, regardless of what part of your life it is. But learning how to do that, I think, is the biggest tool that we have. And and just getting into that, I, I want to talk about uh, for these last five minutes, like the projects that you guys are doing. And I will put all the links uh, as you guys are uh, listening to the show or watching the show. Um, I will put all the links uh, to all of their projects uh, down below. So you'll be able to kind of check out what they're doing, go check out Inglewood, check out social medias, all that stuff. If you want to book them for something, you can go do that. Uh, but Musa, what what projects do you guys have coming up? Um, you already, I think you already know that Algeria is still on the distribution uh, in the national, but what we are working on right now is um, the American dream. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a beautiful story. We already started. We only have left Three, two days left to finish. Written the whole by Shaina Creighton and Musa Aiden. Written by Shaina <laughs> and created by me. Um, three years ago, I, rem I remember I come, come, come this idea. I come, I come up with this idea with JD. He sent me back with, come when you when you get a script, come see me. Until that, I don't want to hear about it. He just sent me, <laughs> and that was three years ago. But yeah, we're working on uh, American Dream. It's a beautiful story. I cannot wait. Um, people to see it uh this is really um a story that we always create a film behind the story right we don't just shoot if there's no story behind it but this one is really really great uh we also have um uh, another project that we're working on hopefully to shoot next uh it's called uh, ultimate sacrifice hopefully uh we're about to shoot that too but also at the moment we're working on american dream and uh there i believe you sent me a trailer or something, a couple of trailers or links, JD, to a couple of your other projects. Uh, what can people watch now if they're just interested to seeing what you guys have done in the past? I do know I watched one of your movies streaming two years ago. So you guys already have stuff out streaming, correct? You are still on mute. <laughs> I'm bad. I was, um, yeah, we have. Um, so you love documentaries. Have you like, watched Behind the Smiles? I haven't watched that one yet, but I did watch your PTSD streaming when that came out. Yeah, that's the shoe box. That's streaming yeah. on um, different streaming platforms. We have um, Behind the exactly what it sounds like, Behind the Smiles. Like, like what's going on, you know, behind everything that you see on social media. Um, so I actually went around for years and, you know, shot – shot people in you know with real dope stories and, and interesting stories that you would have no idea about so that's that's strange oh i think i did watch that okay yeah i think um, i did watch now that you're saying it sorry i have so many movies in my brain right now. <laughs> the, the first episode was justin taplin ross um, yes utah yes. university and you know what i'm saying like like stuff so I think think we have five episodes on that. Uh, we have Maybe Samoan Lisa. Gold that's out on um, Amazon. That's when we Maybe like so. when I first kind of got started. Say say hi. 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 <laughs> it's way past her nap time, and she's <laughs> yeah. So Samoan Gold. That's when we first like really got started, like doing um, like a lot of short films. Um, that's on Amazon. Saya is that's been like one of our most streamed. Um, short film is a sci-fi action film about finding yourself and the sex trafficking and you know just um that type of message that's out there wow it, I, yeah everything that we that we we've done it, it's it's somewhere um out there on um to to be amazon zumu um yeah so we everything we do we just try to make sure we you know get on different platforms and as in many countries as possible 
Well, I appreciate all of your time today. Uh, I know that you both have pretty busy schedules. I'm excited to hear after you get done shooting with your last two days on American Dream. Uh, and then again, I will put all of the links below. Thank you guys. I hope to have you back in a couple months and we're talking about more projects. Thank you. And I got to get you on set with us. I'm still trying. Yes, you, man, yes. I will be there. Time. But I'm going to get I you will, I will be there. You let me know. Thanks, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>